Slabs are the horizontal structural member which has the length and breadth relatively more when compared to its thickness. Openings are required to be provided in slabs in order to provide the way for lift, duct or cable to pass through from one floor to another floor. In that case, special care need to be taken while detailing of the reinforcement for such openings in slabs. Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. In this video, we are going to discuss about openings in slabs, how we can provide the reinforcement detailing when we provide openings in slabs as per SP34. There are few conditions we need to follow when we provide the reinforcement detailing near the openings. So that we need to understand clearly. So without further delay, let's begin now. First thing first, let's start off with the openings in slabs. Where do we provide openings? For what reason we provide openings in slabs? Mainly we provide openings in the staircase and lift area and apart from that we provide openings where we have the duct. Mainly to provide the ventilation we have the duct area. Through this duct area we can run the pipelines as well so that it will not be visible over the other areas of the building. If you look into this everywhere we have the duct area like this. So now we know where we provide openings in slabs. Now the question is, can we provide these kind of openings after construction? The answer is no, because it will create many problems when we drill or cut the slab after construction. So it is always advisable to avoid providing openings in the slab after construction. So it is mandatory to plan the openings before construction. So in the planning stage only, we need to decide where this opening needs to be provided. These openings are mainly provided to pass through the plumbing line, electric line, through one floor to another floor. So these all things need to be decided before the construction starts. So that we can easily decide where we can provide the openings for this kind of duct or lift and star cases. Detailing of opening in slabs is based on the factors like size of openings, loads on slabs and floor vibrations. These are all the main factors we consider while detailing the openings in slabs. Now let's look into the code SP34 which is the handbook on concrete reinforcement and detailing. In class number 9.6 we have openings in slab. We need to consider the special detailing for openings for lift, shaft, large service duct and etc. Such openings shall be strengthened by special beams or additional reinforcement around openings. This is the one we were discussing so that opening need to be strengthened by the additional reinforcement or in some cases we may need to provide the beams. So by providing this we can avoid the diagonal cracks developing at the corners of the openings. So in order to avoid these kind of diagonal cracks we need to provide the additional reinforcement around the openings of the slabs. Here in the note it is mentioned as the number and size and position of trimming bars is a function of the design that should be determined by the designer. We can classify the openings into small and then medium and large. If the openings are small and the slab is not subjected to any special type of loading or vibration condition, the following detailing rules need to be followed around the openings. Let's see what are all the rules. At least one half the quantity of principal steel intersected by the opening is to be placed parallel to the principal steel on each side of opening extended LD beyond the edges of the opening. So this uh, let's discuss with the diagram which is given in the same code. Let's look into the next condition. Diagonal stitching bar are put across the corners of rectangle holes or so placed as to frame circular openings. They should be placed at top and bottom if the thickness of the slab exceeds 150 mm. So in this condition, when the thickness of the slab is exceeding 150 mm, in that case we need to provide the diagonal bars and the length of the diagonal bar should be about 80 diameters. Also in the note it is given as in general openings of diameter less than 250 mm are of size smaller than 200 by 200 mm may be treated as insignificant openings. That means there is no additional reinforcement needs to be provided for these kind of small openings. When the openings are large, we need to follow the above discussed conditions. Now let's discuss the conditions with the diagram which is given in the code. If you look into this diagram, the reinforcements are provided on both sides of the 
openings so the first condition is this reinforcement needs to be one half of the principal reinforcement that is the main reinforcement intersected by the opening that means when we have the slab reinforcement over here which is intersecting the opening in that main reinforcement at least one half of that area of steel needs to be placed parallel to the main reinforcement on each side of the opening the area needs to be one half of the main reinforcement of the slab reinforcement and ld is the development length which needs to be extended beyond the edges of the opening see if this is the edge of the opening it is extended beyond the edges of the opening this is ld development length so on each side of the opening the bar needs to be extended up to the development length this is the first condition in the second condition it is given as the diagonal stitching bars are put across the corners of the rectangular holes if you look into this opening this diagonal bars are put across the corners of the rectangular holes so when we frame the circular openings in that case we need to provide this kind of diagonal bars in addition to this when we have the large openings in that case also we can provide this kind of diagonal bars and when the thickness of the slab exceeding 150 mm in that case also we need to provide this kind of diagonal bars and the length of the diagonal bar should be 80 times the diameter in this diagram we have the additional reinforcing bars for the circular openings in a slab so in addition to the additional reinforcement bar we have the diagonal reinforcement as well and the length needs to be 80 times diameter and the additional bar needs to be extended up, up to the development length now let's look into the typical cutout reinforcement details see we have the openings over here in the slab and we have provided the reinforcement to number of 16 dia bars at top as well as at the bottom and the development length provided here is 600 mm and if you look into the section these are the bars which is provided at both top and bottom and additional extra bar we can provide like this 8 mm or 200 mm center to center so this bar we can calculate by using the condition given in the sp34 code for example the area of the main reinforcement which is intersecting the opening of the slab is 250 mm square the area of the main reinforcement is 250 mm square so in that 1.5 we need to calculate that is one half of the main reinforcement we need to provide near the openings as per sp34 code so 250 multiplied by 1.5 which is equal to 375 mm square so this much area of the reinforcement we need to provide around the openings parallel to the main reinforcement okay so here if you see we have taken the reinforcement as two number of 16 mm dia bar at top as well as bottom so if you calculate the area of two number of 16 mm dia bar it comes around 402 mm square which is almost close to 375 mm square. So in this way, you need to calculate the area of reinforcement for the openings in slabs. So friends, I hope you all like this video. If you want how to model the slab in ETAP software and how to create opening in ETAP software, please do let me know in the comment box so that I'll create a separate video for that. And if you like this content, do hit the like button. Also share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.